Today in the news, we got some corrections, some benchmarks, and a lack of pixels. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with, damn, did I run out of storage again? Well, I guess now is as good time as any to give a shout out to Memory Express, our sponsor. They're based here in Canada and they got great deals on memory cards, PC parts, peripherals, and more. Plus, if you have one around you, you can go and try out the peripherals before you buy them. Check out their online shop in the link down below. Let's get started with a little addendum or correction, if you will, of yesterday's video. Turns out AMD will make the RX 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Limited Edition, God I hate that name, available in more than just the US and China. Here are the other countries. Is that it? Yeah? Is that enough time for me standing still? Snows, make sure uh, you time it right. Oh, and crazy thing, you remember when we thought that the uh, next gen AMD GPUs would be called the RX 600 series? Turns out it was. In fact, AMD's RX 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Limited Edition was actually supposed to be called the RX 690 50th Anniversary Limited Edition. How do we know that? Well, AMD left the branding of the GPU on the golden fan hub of the card on one of their slides. And that naming scheme makes sense. The RX 580 is the new card and the 590 which we received later was basically just a clock speed increase. Yeah, it was a smaller process node, but the only actual change in performance was clock based. And here it would have been the same thing with the anniversary edition. Although with the 590, we did receive 15% of increase, whereas now we only get about 4%. Moving on, let's talk 3800X and 9900K. Now, AMD made it clear during their Computex presentation that the 3800X performs about the same in gaming as the 9900K, thanks to a PUBG benchmark. As for compute power, all we really had was the CES Cinebench R15 comparison of an 8-core Zen 2 early sample against Intel's 9900K. Well, now we got some Geekbench benchmarks. On the first one here, the Intel part is very similar in score, even even beating out AMD CPUs by a comfortable 700 points in single core performance, although a big difference is to be noted on that benchmark. The Intel part was running on 2666 memory compared to AMD's 2133 MHz. If we look at a more normalized Geekbench benchmark where both CPUs are running at the same 2133 MHz, we see that AMD matches Intel in single core score while taking the lead with close to 10,000 points on the multi-core score. This is important since AMD supports at least 3200 MHz memory out of the box while Intel's specs are rated at 2666 minimum. Now it's too early to declare AMD the winner in terms of raw performance. Reviews and tests will definitely do that for us, but the one thing that is clear is that the 3800X will do the job at a lower power level and at the time of filming this video for about $100 cheaper. Oh, and by the way, there are so many of you running an overclocked system, it's pretty ridiculous. Some of you are running modded Xeons, others still rocking some 2500Ks. There's definitely a great balance though of uh, red team and blue team, I love it. Moving on, it looks like Google decided to toss out one of their Pixel products out of the lineup. According to a report by Business Insider and confirmed later by Rick Osterloh from Google, the company decided to stop making the Pixel Slate tablets. In fact, they actually canceled two other tablet projects that were supposed to be released sometimes after 2019. It's understandable in a way since their previous device, the Pixel Slate, pretty much bombed on all fronts thanks to its extremely laggy start. At least Google isn't abandoning portable computers overall. The Pixel Book will still be a thing and it's a two-in-one, so if you really wanted a Chrome OS tablet, just oh, fold it and forget it, I guess. Next up, it looks like the PCIe standard is getting way ahead of its timetable. This year, we're getting our first PCIe Gen 4 motherboards and devices on the market, and last month, the PCIe Gen 5 standard was specced out. Well, apparently now, PCIe Gen 6 is making strides and it will be ready and specced out in 2021. Originally, PCIe Gen 5 was supposed to get specced out in 2022 and Gen 6 in 2025, in accordance with the doubling of bandwidth every three years rule 
rule, but that rule pretty much never applied, except between maybe PCIe Gen 3 and 4, which took way longer than expected. I think it was seven years or something. Now it looks like in a span of three years, we could see the bandwidth quadruple for a whopping 256 gigabytes per second transfer speed. Now, does it matter to us? Not really. And honestly, I think that Gen 4 or maybe even Gen 5 will be the consumer cap for at least a good decade. I mean, we barely even let technologies catch up to those speeds anymore with GPUs far from capping PCIe Gen 3 and SSDs barely even making a dent in PCIe Gen 4 speeds. What about you guys? Do you think PCIe Gen 4, maybe 5 will stick as long as PCIe Gen 3 did? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. My desktop is filling up. Mm -hmm.